Hey there! I'm so excited to bring this tutorial to you. This is the um, Valentine's Day composite that I did for my girls, kind of on a um, on a whim. We I knew I wanted to create a Valentine's Day image, like a composite image, but I didn't know quite how I wanted to do that. Um, as far as me being six months pregnant and having both girls and Valentine's Day falling on a Wednesday this week, so. I was really excited with the outcome of this portrait and how it, it all came together in the last minute. Um, I had the idea that I wanted to have my girls with um, hearts on Valentine's Day and I knew that that was a big, um, I wanted to create the message of spreading love and especially you know with Valentine's Day being the anniversary of love or the celebration of love, I knew that that's how I wanted to represent that um, with my girls. So. This image was taken at five o'clock in the evening. This was after a full day at school for both them and for me. So it was a, a very quick, less than 10 minutes. We um, got home from school, Madison, my oldest in the pink dress. She'd been running around at um, after school all day or all afternoon. So in the Florida heat, she was um, uh, <laughs> not at her best to say the least. So anyway, we, we got home. We, ha I had these dresses that I actually bought for, um, my maternity shoot coming up here in the next, in the next couple weeks. And these, the colors of these dresses were actually not originally pink and purple. They were, um, cream and blue. So, um, I, you know, last minute decision decided, let's go ahead and use these dresses and I'll just Photoshop the color. I'll change the colors in the end result anyway. So, that's kind of the gist of where this this image came from. These um, this picture was outside my front door inside on the sidewalk, um, five o'clock in the evening, right after school. So, I guess my my point in sharing all of this with you is that there is no perfect time, especially when you're dealing with little kids and you're trying to create fine art images. So, um, you know, it can be done anytime, anywhere. You just have to make it work. So, uh, or work with what you have is what I was trying to say. Anyway, so we uh, got home from school, threw the dresses on the girls. I um, brushed Avery's hair out real quick. We put Madison's hair in a bun because there was no saving it from the playground. And um, we walked outside. So um, let's see, what else did I want to tell you? The the dresses, these dresses actually came from Pink Peony, Peony Boutique. <laughs> How are you say? I can never say that, that word or that flower correctly. But anyway, um, I'll post a link for this dress down below. And also, um, I'll post the link to all the stock that I used, which really I only used Pixel Squid for this image, which um, made it pretty simple, which was, um, you know, helped in my time crunch. So uh, some other things you might want to know, uh, this was taken with my Nikon D750. It's a 50 millimeter lens that I used. And uh, for this time of day, I took... Um, it was at five o'clock in the evening, like I said before, and I used ISO 200, f-stop of 2.8, and shutter speed of 640. So without further ado, um, the first thing I want to show you is if you haven't used this website before, this is called Pixel Squid, and this is where um, all of my stock images for this particular um, portrait you know, where I, where I got them from. So the hearts that you see in the bucket and flying around are actually considered the paper cutout hearts. So if you click those and you can actually download them either with the shadows on or off for this image, it doesn't really matter, but, um, I believe I did with them off. Um, so anyway, I'll show that to you in just a minute, but if you've never experienced pixel squid before, definitely check it out, especially if you are interested in doing fine art and composite photography. All right. So first thing I want to do is I want to open up my image and I'm going to make a couple of small adjustments. There's really not a whole lot that needs to be done, but I am going to increase the exposure just a little bit. Um, we're going to move the contrast up. There looks good. We are going to, let's go ahead and bring the highlights up just a little bit. And the shadows I usually uh, bring up to uh, help with the contrast to kind of offset it. The contrast brings them, helps them to pop a little bit, but the shadows will kind of make it a little more subtle. Um, I think that's pretty good. All right, and then I'm going to go to, let's see, 
Um, the luminance and noise reduction, it doesn't really need a whole lot of noise reduction, but I do like to make my images just a little bit softer, so I usually bring that up just a tiny bit. And I'm going to go into the lens corrections, and I'm going to make sure that enable profile corrections is selected. This is a trick I learned uh, about a year and a half ago that has been so helpful in my work, and it actually takes your images from looking like a typical image to flattening it a little bit better. So if you think about the way your lens is, is round, your image is going to have a little bit of roundness up in the corners um, based on you know taking the picture with a lens. So if you click Enable Profile Corrections, what it does is it takes your image and it just flattens it. It gets rid of that round curvature in there. And then I'm going to click Open Image. Okay, so here we are. All right, my first thing that I want to do, I am not going to be changing this background. This is the background that I want to use, so I'm going to leave everything um, the same as far as like I'm not going to move, you know, I'm not going to change the size. I'm not going to move um, anything around, but I am going to straighten it because it is a little crooked. But what I normally do is I look at the um, horizon line or I look at, um, you know, where the ground where you, yeah, basically the horizon line. There's really no other better way to explain it. And I, I, I turn it so that it's it's um, straightened from there. So I use that as like my focal point, especially if I'm using my own image um, as far as composites go. All right, so I'm gonna crop this. I'm gonna bring them to a little bit more of the center of the image. But I'm also, you'll notice over here that this piece of Madison's dress has actually been cut off. So I'm gonna move this over just a little bit as well. And that looks pretty good. I might play with that a little bit, but I'm going to bring this down. And I don't really follow a rule as far as um, size of image. I just look at what I like and what looks good. And I just kind of eyeball, um, you know, based on uh, the image and the, the center of the image and what, what works best. All right, so uh, I'm going to collect, select my marquee tool over here, and I'm going to fill this in just a little bit so I can complete the background. I'm going to click Option. I use a Mac, um, sorry, not Option, Control. I'm going to click and click Fill. You can just right click. This is just for me because I use a Mac, but if you have a normal PC, you can um, you know, just right click and then click fill and that way it'll fill in those blanks for you. Um, I don't really need to worry about the background because we're going to blur that out anyway, so I'm not too worried about it being perfect. Let's see. All right, so my next step is I want to go ahead and blur the background. So I want to make the girls pop out. I want them to, um, you know, be the center of my image. So I'm going to actually create a new layer. So I'm going to right click and, sorry, I'm going to copy my layer. So I'm just going to do Command J on my keyboard and get a second, um, you know, or first copy of my layer. I am then, this is a trick that I learned from Morgan Burke's photography, and I am going to click on my clone stamp. And what I'm doing is I'm going to clone out my girls. So I'm going to clone them, um, you know, take them out of the image. So that way I can, I can blur the entire copy um, and then go back in and, and get rid of what I don't want blurred or keep what I want blurred. And the reason for doing that is, is it helps to, um, the haloing effect when you, um, sorry, sidetracked when you are cloning out and blurring and trying to blur out your background, what happens is, is there's a halo effect that usually happens. And, um, so what I like to do is I just kind of go through and stamp out my subject and then I will, um, blur it so it kind of helps to get rid of the uh, the haloing effect and it makes it look a little bit more natural. And this doesn't have to be perfect. This is, um, again, just going to, it's going to be blurred out anyway. So it's kind of, you don't have to be completely picky with this, which I like. I'm going to blend that just a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to keep taking her out of there. And all I'm doing is I'm using Option and I'm clicking to select what I want to copy. And then I'm just clicking across my subject. 
to get rid of her. <laughs> And this is going to take me a few minutes, so you're going to have to just bear with me. I like to try to match up the, um, like on the sidewalks, or the sidewalk, the lines on the sidewalk. I'm trying to match those up as best I can so that it does look a little more, um, you know, natural, cohesive kind of blends together a little bit. So I am taking pieces from close by to clone her out so it does look as real as I can make it. And you'll notice I keep going back to my original spot. That's usually how you get the, um, the cloning effect where everything looks exactly the same. But um, because I'm kind of limited on the choices that I have, I'm going to just do my best. <coughs> Excuse me. And what's really nice about this too is we're going to actually bring back the girls. So a lot of these imperfections that you're seeing that I'm not coming through and correcting, these are going to, um, they're going to, you're not going to see them at all because we're going to have the, um, the girls are going to be covering it. So the main reason why we're doing this is to just get rid of the haloing and make sure that because we're blurring it, it actually looks pretty pretty natural rather than having them look like stickers stuck on a page. And I actually haven't done this technique very much. This is uh, maybe my second or third image that I've done this technique with, but I, I'm finding that I love it. It's so simple. Um, it, it takes a little bit longer, which is okay. Um, you know, I don't mind it taking a little bit longer because I know what it ends up looking like. So I'm willing to uh, put a little bit more work in there. And right now I'm just copying the grass and covering up my kid. <laughs> You could even, um, if you were really running short on time, you could even just blur out like, or sorry, clone out the um, uh, the outer, like the edges of her, because once we bring back the copy anyway, um, she's going to cover up all of that, that mess going on right there. I'm going to cover up these... Um, the sidewalk stripes just because to me they're distracting and I don't like them. <laughs> so we'll get rid of them while we're here. Let's put it in here. And again, oops. If you make a mistake, just edit step backward. That's usually what I do. Uh, let's see. Um, a lot of times when you use your clone stamp, I don't necessarily like to do it at 100%, but because of what I'm doing and like the purpose of what I'm doing, it doesn't really bother me that I am. But normally if you're using the clone, the clone stamp um, and not planning on blurring it out or not planning on covering it back up, then I would definitely recommend um, doing it a little bit more naturally than what I am. I don't like that one. Let's go back. Um, and what I mean by that is, uh, going in at a gradual, you know, opacity, like not doing the hundred percent. Okay. For Avery, I'm going to go ahead and 
just going to copy the bush that's over here. So let's do this one. And I'm also going to go through and copy some of these bushes here because I want to get rid of our street sign. And I also think the house in the back is very distracting. So we're going to get rid of that as well. And I'm just taking different pieces from the background and just putting them together. Like so. This one has like a random tree. So I'm going to go back in and cover that up. That's pretty good. I'm just going to take this little bit of the roof, cover that sign some more. Again, I'm not trying to be perfect here because um, it's just going to get blurred out. So I'm not too concerned, which is nice. All right, let's finish getting Maddie taken care of. You should be good to go. That sidewalk looks a little goofy right there. <laughs> but again, it's really not that important for what we're doing. This looks so sloppy, but end result will look good. Okay, that's pretty good for now. So if I turn this copy on and off, you'll see it. <laughs> there they are, and they're gone. So, all right, so what I wanna do is I wanna blur this entire thing. So I'm gonna go up to filter. I'm gonna click on blur, and let's see. Actually, I'm gonna go to blur gallery. And I'm going to go to Field Blur. And as soon as you see this little circle right here, then you can um, actually, as soon as it's finished. Okay, so you can either dial this circle left or right, or you can come over here to the right under your blur tools and you can actually increase it or decrease it. So whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, mine is... Um, it's running really slow because I'm recording. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 15. And it might even go up just a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here to the top and I'm gonna click OK. And you will see the difference as soon as my computer's done thinking. Okay, sorry guys, taking a minute just because of this. Um, it's because I'm recording, so my computer tends to run a little run a little bit slower.
And we're back. Okay, sorry for that little delay. I didn't want to keep waiting for that to finish um, thinking. Okay, so when I turn this layer on and off, you'll actually see there's the girls and then they're gone. So my goal here is, is I want to leave this entire background. I want this all, let me hit my select tool. This entire black background, I want that blurred out. So you'll see that it actually did a pretty good job. I'm going to go through and fix some of these imperfections here, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy with it. So, all right, so my job now is I want to mask it out. So I'm going to take down here at the bottom of my tools, I'm going to click the layer mask. It's a little square with a circle in the middle. And I am going to hit Command I or Control I on your, your keyboard. And I want to make sure that I have a white layer mask. So with my white layer mask selected at 100% opacity, I'm going to go through, whoops, and I'm going to blur all this out. Okay, so around Avery, I have to be really careful. So I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. And with a smaller brush, I'm going to go through and blur this. And all I'm wanting to do is I just want to get rid of that, um, that sign around her hair. So I want to make sure my brush is soft and I'm just going to carefully kind of go around. I don't want to get rid of all of her stray hairs. I want to keep some of them to keep her looking pretty natural, but I do want all of this blurred. So everything around her. And you'll see when we zoom out, you actually can't really tell. Okay, get this side. sidewalk stripes that we got rid of earlier. All right, let me zoom back out. Okay, so you'll see where it's all, this is all blurred all around here, but everything else is pretty sharp. So I wanna make everything in the background match. So I'm gonna go through probably to about where the sidewalk Maybe to like the tip of where Madison's bun is. And you'll know if you covered everything because you can um, you can hit the uh, what is that the backslash above your return key, and it'll show you exactly where you painted. Oops, maybe with the white brush. And that helps too sometimes just to make sure that you didn't miss anything or you, um, it, you know, just so that you can see where it is that you've already blurred. Okay, so I pretty much want an even line across because what I'm going to do then is I'm going to actually bring about the, the blur naturally. So the very back, I want it completely, whoops, blurred out. Get rid of that. Oops, that is not what I want. Make sure that you're on your layer mask when you're painting with the white or black. Put that right on again. And I am at a, um, forgot to mention, I'm at a, um, 100% soft brush, 100% opacity. And that looks pretty good. All right, so my next step then, I want to, I still wanna have a little bit of blur going on like around in here, but I don't need it to be quite as strong. So I'm gonna go bring my brush down to about 40%. 
I'm going to turn the red back on and I'm going to kind of go through around in here. I don't want to get this on them because I want to make sure that they stay pretty sharp. So I'm just kind of going through and bringing just a little bit of blur, but because they're in my, um, everything that's, that's in line with them, I want to keep perfectly sharp. The sidewalk isn't really as much of an issue because it pretty much blurred out on its own. Okay, that's pretty good. Let me turn that off. So if I turn this off and on, you'll see where the blur comes in. Um, I do like to go back through over with a black brush and just at 100% and make sure that I have, you know, I didn't get anything on them or any of the blur on them. So I usually just kind of go back over just to make sure. Okay. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna leave, um, oh, that white's, that white's still there. I never took that off. I'm going to use a black brush and I'm just gonna cover it up. And you'll see that it's actually pretty sharp at this point, so let's see if we can. I'm going to merge these two. So I'm just gonna right click and merge them. I'm going to create another copy, Command-J or Control-J. And I'm going to do that one more time. So the Blur Gallery field blur. And I'm going to just click OK because my settings, the 15 will work. There we go. All right, so I'm going to put a layer mask back on that. I'm going to invert it because I don't want it to be all over the entire picture. So with a white brush and a black layer mask, I'm just going to get rid of that. Okay, so now I'm gonna merge these two again. All right, so at this point we've cropped our image, we've blurred our background, we, um, uh, oh, I know what I wanna do. I want to make another um, layer copy, so Command J or just Control J. And I wanna fix, oops, clone stamp at 100%. I just want to kind of get rid of those like light spots. They're a little distracting to me. I'm actually gonna use a 60% brush. And if you're wondering how I'm changing that without showing you, I out of habit, I, um, I change it on the keyboard. So if I wanna be at 60%, I type in a six. If I wanna be at 40%, I type in a four. If I wanna be at 100, I type in a zero. Um, for me, it's just easier. The more shortcuts you learn, the faster it goes. Um, and I'm just gonna fix this a little bit. I kind of want to bring about a round bush right there. There we go. And then I wanna fix this area right here above her bun, but I'm gonna do that with Liquify. So I'm gonna show you that in just a minute, but. Okay, this looks a little duplicated to me. So I'm gonna take just an area from over here and just shade it in a little. a little better and then I'm gonna blur this just a little bit or blend it I mean so it doesn't quite look copy and paste in all right okay that looks pretty good all right I'm gonna merge these two again so all I'm doing is right clicking and then clicking merge um, all right so my next step is <laughs> okay my lovely little Sophia bucket <laughs> so Desperate times call for desperate measures, and I wanted to do this fast, and I didn't have time to go find a prop that, you know, looked a little better than Sophia the First. So <laughs> we, I went to Pixel Squid, and I got a, let's see, where is it? I already opened it up, a steel bucket. Um, so what I love about this bucket is, is that you, or with Pixel Squid, you can, um, move, move this, the, the clip art to, I call it clip art, but you can move the stock images to fit the direction of your needs. So this one, she's kind of holding it at an angle. So I want to make sure that I got something that was held at an angle as well. So I am going to, so I moved basically in pixel squid, I moved it around so that it would fit 
you know, the image that I could just kind of get rid of the bucket and replace it with this one. So I'm going to take my marquee tool here. Um, and I'm just going to select my bucket. So I'm then going to, oops, let's go to edit. I'm going to copy and I'm going to go back to my original, um, this one here, and I'm going to paste it. Okay. So I zoom in for these because I like to be able to make sure that I'm matching up the buckets together. So I'm going to click my move tool and I'm going to, I'm going to have to play with it just a little bit, but I am going to size it so I can write, um, whoops, I want to transform. So I'm going to do edit, transform, free transform. Sorry, there it is. <laughs> I'm so used to my shortcuts. Free transform. And I'm going to hold my shift down, my shift key down. So when I hold my shift key down, it's keeping the proportions of the bucket the same, um, but it's allowing me to resize it. So I'm resizing, you know, vertically and horizontally at the same time. I'm going to hold my shift key down, and then I'm going to pull from the top. I usually pull from the top right corner. You can pull from, you know, whichever corner you prefer. But I'm going to match up the bucket with the handle. So you'll notice this handle is super skinny and I don't mind the handle she's holding. Like that doesn't really bother me. The only thing that's goofy about it is the color. So I'm going to use that handle, but I'm going to use this bucket. So in order to do that, I'm going to click okay. And I'm going to bring down my opacity so that I can see what I'm doing. But what my goal here is, is I want to match up where the handle and the bucket meet. Okay, so I'm going to transform again. If you want to do control T or command T, that's going to help. Um, so you don't have to use those. Um, uh, you don't have to use the, you don't have to actually go up to the, the toolbar and select what you're going to do. I'm going to hit the shift key again, and I'm going to bring this down. And all I'm really doing right now is I'm just playing with it. I'm just kind of moving it around. Every image is going to change, you know, it just depends on what it is that you're trying to do. But you'll notice that you can still see some of the Sophia bucket down here. And that's okay. I don't mind that um, because I can just replace it with her dress in the sidewalk. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the opacity back up. And it looks kind of goofy right now. However, we are going to label this. So I'm going to double click and just type bucket. And then I'm going to put a layer mask on it down at the bottom. All right, so I need to click the brush tool. So when I, um, you can type B on your keyboard or click the blah, 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 sorry brush tool. And then I'm going to make sure it's black. So if you have um, this front color is the one that is uh, the color that will show up on your image. So I always want to make sure that the front color is the one that I want to use. If it's not, I can just hit X and it'll bring my black color forward. So I want to use black and I want to make sure I have a hard brush at 100%. All right, again, I'm gonna bring that opacity back down over here so that way I can see what I'm doing. And I want to, um, I'm gonna move this a little bit more. Let me click on the actual bucket again. I'm gonna click my move tool. There we go, that's what I wanna do. I'm gonna free transform one more time. Command T or um, Control T on your keyboard. I'm not really worried about this side matching up as much as I am about this one because that side can blend a little bit better. Let me make it just a little bit bigger again. There we go. That's pretty good. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's um, my brush tool. And I'm going to go through and just, um, that's not what I wanted to do. Edit, undo. I want to bring forth the handle. Here we go. All right, so I'm just going to get rid of this. Okay, and then I'm going to go through and just bring all the blue forward.
Okay, so you'll see that I actually um, got a little bit of red in over here. So I'm just going to hit X, get my white brush back, and get rid of that. All right, so I'm going to bring up the opacity so that you can see the whole thing. And you'll see it still kind of looks a little goofy. So I'm going to zoom in even more. And you know what I think I'm going to do? All right, let me go back to my layer mask. I'm going to bring forward my white. Um, oops, sorry, my black. And I'm going to leave that little circle there. I think it just looks a little more natural. And I'm going to just change it and make it gray. And all I'm doing right now is just getting rid of the red. Okay, let's see how that looks. If you hit Control Plus and Control Minus, that's what I'm using to zoom in and out with. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, I am going to, I'm gonna hide the bucket I'm going to click on my layer zero and I'm going to hit command J or control J just to make another copy. And I want to clone stamp out what I need to. So here's my bucket. I want to get rid of this little red right here. I want to get rid of all of this Sophia down at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that your layer zero copy is selected. And I'm going to click stamp, um, letter S for my clone stamp. It's at 60%. I'm going to change it to 100 just by selecting zero or I can move this up, up to 100. I'm going to click my option and I'm just going to clone that out. And I'm doing this on a layer just in case I mess up or I'm not happy with the end result, then I can, all I have to do is just delete it and start over. Okay. So down at the bottom where the dress is, this is going to be a little trickier only because you have to blend it a little bit better, but doable. So all I'm doing is just getting rid of the bucket. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit harder for me to connect to. So I'm actually going to get rid of, well, let's try it. Let's see. All right, I'm going to select some of her dress up here. And all I'm doing, because I'm selected on the layer zero copy, I can actually, um, it's not going to affect the bucket at all because the bucket layer is on top. If the bucket layer was below, it would. I'm gonna bring my opacity on my brush down, so I'm gonna just type that six on my keyboard, or I'm gonna click up here and bring it down to six. And I'm gonna just take some from up here, just to blend it a little bit better. Okay, so see how this is like a random piece over here? I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that. And I want it to be a little bit sharper, so I'm gonna bring my brush, I'm gonna bring the hardness up, maybe like 66. That looks pretty good. All right, so I'm going to take this little area right here. And I'm just going to finish out that side of the dress. So it is still pretty harsh over there. So I'm going to do my 0% and I'm going to blend it. Let's take this one. It needs to be a little bit lighter, I think. Let's go with this one. She might have been a little too hard. So we'll just soften it up just a little bit. All right, let me zoom back out. Here. Okay, Sophia Bucket is gone. I could probably fix this a little bit if I really wanted to be nitpicky. Down at the bottom, this is a little still pretty dark. So I'm going to take some of these lighter areas and just kind of blend it just a little bit, lighten it up a little. Okay. Zoom back out. Not bad. All right, so we've got our bucket. We've got Sophia Bucket is gone. And I'm going to take my layer copy and my layer zero copy. Whoops. 
sorry, I repeated that, my layer zero and my layer zero copy. I'm gonna hold my shift key down and click both of them. I'm gonna right click and merge visible. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Step backward. Uh, I wanna do merge down, sorry. Right click, merge down, there we go. Okay, so with the bucket, you'll notice that it is very, um, it doesn't quite blend like it looks kind of goofy as far as um, <clears throat> looking like it's just stuck together. So I'm gonna actually click down here for my new layer and I'm gonna click a curves layer. <clears throat> I'm gonna right click and click clipping mask. So that clipping mask means that this is only going to apply to the layer directly beneath it. <clears throat> so once I click on my curves, I'm gonna bring my curves down because it's a little bright and I'm gonna also bring down my highlights up here. So I want it to blend just a little bit. That's actually a little too dark. Here we go. And the contrast, I'm gonna bring that up just a little bit. And I'm not, um, I'm not super picky on this because I kind of like it to look, I feel like it adds to the painting effect. So I kind of like that it, I'm gonna actually bring the curves up more than I thought. Um, so I kind of like it to look not completely blended. I do like it blended, obviously, but I don't like it to be so, um, I kind of like it to have a little bit of a fantasy feel. So when I click on my curves up here, I'm gonna click this drop down. This is where I was, I was under the RGB channel. I'm gonna click on red, and I'm gonna add just a little bit of pink to that bucket. There we go. And it's actually still a little too light now, so I'm gonna go back to the RGB. I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit, and that looks pretty good to me. Okay, I'm gonna change the label of this from curves one to bucket. And I want to, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and change the bucket color, the handle on the bucket. Um, Okay, I'm gonna merge these two together. So I'm gonna select these two. I'm gonna right click and I'm going to click um, group from layers. And I'm gonna label this bucket and click okay. So now I've got a layer bucket or a bucket layer. Whoops, all right, I'm gonna zoom in. And I'm going to Okay, I'm gonna hit my eyedropper tool, letter I on my keyboard, and I'm gonna select a gray in the bucket. Probably a medium gray would work. Uh, you could do like the lighter that's matching the highlight or you could do the darker, but I'm gonna go with just a uh, basic gray. I'm gonna click my new layer and click solid color. I'm gonna click okay. And I'm going to click, I'm gonna change it from normal up here to color. All right, so. Going back to um, uh, the layer mask, I'm gonna invert it, so Control I or Command I. I'm gonna make sure I have a white brush and I want it to be um, a hard brush. So make sure that your hardness is at 100% and your opacity is also at 100 up here. And all I'm gonna do is just go through and change it. <laughs> And I'm just going to paint over the blue. I'm doing this fairly quickly, just for the sake of time, because this is already going to be a long tutorial, so bear with me. And as I'm doing this, I wanna be careful of where the blue meets, like her hands. Okay, sorry about that. We had um, 
uh, somebody knock at the door and my, my computer is directly next to the door. So anyway, we should be back on track now. Such is life. I'm trying to do this during nap time. So there's always something. Okay. Um, oh, I wanted to fix where I was sloppy. And the nice thing about the handle being blue and her dress being blue is that it kind of blends together. So you don't have to be super picky, um, you know, when you zoom far away. All right, so that's pretty good. I'm gonna like right click, merge down. Okay, so my next step is I wanna add the hearts to the bucket. Like I wanna put them in the bucket. Um, so the way that I do that is, is I take a couple of these different versions of Pixel Squid hearts. And so all I did was I took these hearts, rotated them around a little bit and, um, downloaded them. So Okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to select just various oops, hearts and colors. I'm going to marquee select. I'm going to control C and control V. And I want to make sure that my heart layer is on top of the bucket. And I do that because I want the bucket to, I want you to be able to see the heart with the bucket. I'm sorry, the heart as if it's behind the bucket. I'm going to show you what I mean in just a second. All right, I'm going to go get another one. Let's do, I want to do a pink one. There we go. Control C. And Control V. And I want them to be at different like angles and different positions so they look like they're popping up out of the bucket. And let me go ahead and show you what I'm going to do with them. I'm going to change this title from heart or layer one to heart. And I'm going to change this one to heart. And I'm going to put a layer mask on each one. So when I zoom in, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, with a hard black brush, I'm going to go through and get rid of it the parts that I want to look as if they are behind the bucket. I do these without changing the opacity and primarily that's just because it's easier for me to see it this way, but you could change the opacity so you could see the, whoops, I'm gonna switch back to a white. You could do this where if you change it back to, um, sorry, lost my train of thought. If you switch this back to the opacity, like if you bring it lower and then bring it back, you know, if you see that better, if that works for you, then great. For me, this is just a little bit easier. Okay, so there's one. I'm going to do another one on the pink. And this time I'm going to get rid of the handle. I'm going to cover it up anyway. And I'm using my, um, my stylus pen, so it probably takes me a little bit longer to do these details than it would if I was just using a mouse, like a computer mouse. I normally prefer my computer mouse, but um, my batteries actually died. <laughs> so uh, I'm using the tablet today, which is good for this small detail stuff anyway. So it works. All right, I'm gonna zoom in. Okay. Sorry, I had to take a quick break there for a second.
and let's go get another one. Whoops. I think I want to do this angle. You can select this with the marquee tool. Sometimes I just do command um, uh, with the, I'll do control A and just select all of it. So I'll do control A, control C, and control V. And then I'm gonna zoom in again, control T to transform. So I'm going to do this one. This one's a little bit of a goofy angle, but I think it should be fine. Here we go. That's better. I'm just going to kind of line it up with the, make it look like it's laying on top. I'm going to change that title to heart again. I'm going to put my layer mask on. And soft, or sorry, excuse me, hard black brush. I'm going to go through and. Oh, my computer is stalling on me. We're lagging. Okay, I'm going to put another one of those pink ones. So I'm just going to do a control J and on the heart copy, I'm going to, um, you can do this one of two ways with a white brush. You can just go through and um, bring it all back on the copy. You can do it that way because it's so small, or you could just delete the layer mask and put a new one on there. So I just, um, I'm going to do it this way just for the sake of time. And I'm going to bring this one behind all the other ones. And on the layer mask with a black brush. This is probably the most tedious of the whole thing. This is a very simple composite, but it's just a matter of getting all those, those details together. Okay. And then, um, let's see, I'm just going to do the same with this one. I'm going to bring that all the way back. So with my white brush, I'm just going to bring it back. And I'm going to put this one um, behind everything else. Whoops. There you go. That's where I want it. And then I just want one more pink one. Yeah, let's do that one and then do a control J. And I'm going to control T, transform it a little bit. You don't want it to look identical to the other ones, but they're all going to kind of look the same just because that's what they are. Whoops. Okay. Oops. That's pretty good. All right. So I'm going to group all of these. I'm going to hit shift and I'm going to control G and I'm going to label it bucket hearts. And if I could spell hearts correctly, that would be good.
Okay, and then I want to add a curves layer that I only want to go to the bucket heart. So I'm gonna right click and create the clipping mask and I'm gonna bring them up a little bit. They're really saturated. So I want to, I wanna bring the highlights down. I just wanna blend them a little bit better. And then you can bring the contrast. Let's go. Yeah, up, I think. I like that better. And I'm gonna bring that forward just a little bit. I'm gonna add just a little bit of red to it. There we go. And so we turn this on and off. It's actually gonna, you'll see it matches her dress a little bit better. Okay, I'm gonna group that. So Control G. Oops. And I'm gonna label it Bucket Hearts. Okay, so my buckets, or my Bucket Hearts. All right, so now the next thing I wanna do is I want to put, um, Let's, let's go ahead and change the girls' dresses. So <clears throat> my first step is I wanna do a color. Yeah, let's do a solid color. Okay, so the bucket's gonna show up with the hearts because it's top, but I'm gonna change Madison's to a pink, but I need to go darker um, because hers is so light. So I'm just kind of working with colors a little bit. I'm gonna change this to color and I want to invert it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna color it and not worry about what the actual color is right now. And I'm gonna come back to the color just to see you know, what I like. So obviously this is way too like fluorescent pink um, from what I, I want to accomplish. So sorry guys, my computer is running so slow with the recording. Um, and I'm doing this with a hard brush so that I don't get much of the grass or, you know, any of the other pieces that I'm trying to not color pink. Because I'm using my tablet and it's going so slow, it's making me literally click every single time rather than click and drag, which I'd much rather be doing. But that's okay. We'll make it work. I like to zoom in quite a bit just so I can see where I'm at. Like you can see her arm right there, so I'm going to take that off. So all I'm doing is just painting this and because of the tool ruffles, it's taking me a little bit longer. I can normally get like this type of composite done. I could probably get this done in maybe 45 minutes an hour if I have a really good idea of what I want but a lot of times what happens is I distract myself and I start playing and I start getting different ideas and trying new things so a lot of times images will take me you know a while to put together because there's so many things I want to try and do and um, you know but if I have a set thing in mind where I really know what I want um I could probably get it done in about an hour.
And it doesn't help that I am such a perfectionist. So I'm going to try to do this a little bit faster just for the sake of time. I'm going to make sure I don't cover those grass blades because that's what's going to help make it look believable. The color change anyway. And what I like to do is I like to actually just go through and outline what it is that I'm coloring or color changing, especially with something like this. And then I'll get a bigger brush and just go through and, you know, knock it all out. A little bit faster it's the lining that takes forever for me And you'll notice that I'm just changing, I'm changing my um, brush size as I go. And it's super simple. I use my right hand with the mouse or with the um, tablet or whatever it is that I'm using. And my left hand, I'll put it on the, um, the bracket keys. So if I want it bigger, um, I hit the right bracket or the closed bracket. And if I want it smaller, then I hit the left. And that seems to help, um, you know, speed efficiently wise for it to go just a little bit faster. Okay, y'all, there you have it. All right, so it is way too fluorescent for me, so I'm gonna go even just a little bit darker to bring about that soft, there we go. Oh, maybe a little too soft. There we go, that looks good. And we're gonna leave it for now, I might change it. We'll see, you never know. All right, little Avery. I'm gonna do another color. I'm gonna change her to purple, so I'm gonna stick in that same purpley pink era. And I'm going to control I, I want to invert it. And again, I'm not really worried about the color that I chose for her yet. Um, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to work with that as soon as I'm done. I like to paint it first um, so that I can really see uh, what it is that I'm working with because one stripe of color is not going to be enough for me. I like to be able to Um, I like to be able to look at it, you know, as a whole and change it as I need to. Okay, so see these little holes in her lace? That's going to be a little tricky. Um, but I'm going to show you what I would do or what I do in that type of situation. As soon as I'm done with her dress, I'm going to get really teeny tiny and get in here. I'm not going to be super picky because, again, once I zoom out, it's not going to be as noticeable, especially because there's so many little tiny corners of hers. But again, I think the detail is where it's at. I think this is, um, you know, taking the time to spend on the actual detail. And the really cool thing is, is... The detail is what brings your whole image together. So it's putting in the effort and the time. Um, but for me, I don't mind doing this because it's easier for me to do this than it is to get a bunch of props together, go to a session, spend, you know, an hour at the session, 
um, doing a bunch of different shots. While yes, it's good to like get it all done at one time and then just go back through and edit it, you know, like with like a simple edit. I um, find that this is easier for me, um, especially with being a mom of two, almost three. My oldest is six. My baby will be here in just a couple months. So for me, you know, lugging around a bunch of equipment, props, all of that stuff, it just, it's not feasible for me. So that's how composite, comp composite artwork really took off with me was just, it just freed up a lot of time. So as much as this is taking up time, you know, I look at the alternative of, um, you know, a typical family session, which could take, you know, you could plan to be there for an hour. And if you have, you know, kids that are struggling, you know, you don't want to leave your family hanging. So, you know, I'm the type that I will stick around and wait, um, you know, until I get the shots that I know I need. Um, and sometimes if, if we're talking, you know, uh, summer day or mosquitoes here in Florida, we deal with those a lot. So, you know, all of that stuff kind of plays into making it a not easy session to complete. So uh, that's why I love composites. I love being able to just spend my time. I usually put on Netflix and I will watch, you know, whatever show I've been wa binge watching for the moment. I'll probably come back, side note, I'll probably come back and soften up these edges of the color just because her dress, there's so much at the bottom, like where Madison's dress kind of blended in with the uh, grass a little bit. This needs a little bit more work on it. So um, anyway, go back to what I going back to what I was saying with Netflix and stuff. I love just being able to Netflix, or I'll put on you know music um, and just kind of do my thing. And this is usually what I do after my kids go to bed. <clears throat> um, my husband works late, so this works for our schedule. It may not work for everybody's, um, but I found that my most creative time is at night. So it's usually my wind down time. I say wine down, but I'm sure that probably sounded like wine as in drinking wine down, wine going down, which I wouldn't uh, necessarily say no to. I would now, but I'm sure you get what I mean. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit of, of a soft brush, and I'm going to just kind of clean that up just a little bit so it's not quite so harsh at the bottom. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so Avery's, you'll see her, see how she's got the blue coming through? The easiest way that I would do this, and I'm doing this quickly, but I'll probably, with a soft brush, I'll go at like 40%, and I'll just kind of go into a couple of those little areas and just get rid of the blue. But I'm using a soft brush, so it blends a little bit better. And also, when you put your gradient maps on, that'll help to blend it as well. Okay, again, I'm doing this pretty quick. I would probably go back and spend a little bit more time on that just because I am a picky person. All right, so that looks a little better. Um, okay, so I'm going to change her dress. It's a little a little too like bright purple for me so I'm gonna go uh, probably right around in here yeah all right let's leave that and because I toned down Avery's dress I'm gonna tone down Maddie's just a little bit more which is why I don't get rid of the colors until I know for sure that I'm happy with my result um yeah so let's see if I group those you can see the color change Pretty cool, right? I love that. Okay. All right, we are moving right along. Last thing I wanna do is I wanna put the hearts on the ground here. 
and I want to put a couple dropping, you know, in front of them and put a couple in the front as the foreground. So that way it, um, uh, you know, it looks like they're kind of all fluttering and floating behind them. So with my hearts, I'm going to get the ones that lay on the ground. And there they are. Okay, so here's a pink one. I'm going to control A, control C, bring it to my image and control V. I'm going to control T or command, depends on what kind of computer you have. And I like to get rid of the transform once I'm done with it. So I hit enter and click my move tool and put it down on the ground. Let's see, I need a red one. Where are my red ones? Here we go. All right, control A, control C, and control V. And I'm gonna do these a couple of different sizes. Enter, and if I need to move it, which I'm okay with where it is. I'm gonna do that exact same heart, the red one. I'm gonna just do Control J, and with my move tool, I'm gonna to rotate it. Uh, no, I'm not. What was I gonna do? I had a thought. Make it a little bit bigger, and I'm gonna actually bring that off of the image. Yep. All right, so back to my layer one, the pink. I'm going to do Control J. I'm going to do another one right here. Now, you can play with this. You can, you know, make them bigger, smaller, whatever you want to do. Um, you know, I'd probably add a couple more, but just for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and merge those or group those. And I'm going to call them ground hearts. Uh, before I forget, I want to put a curves layer on those. And right click, clipping mask. I'm going to bring up my curves, down my highlights, and I bring some contrast out of it so they kind of blend a little bit better. I'm going to change that to red. I'm going to put a little bit of red, just a little bit. All right, and then I'm going to group that out. Okay, last thing, oops, second to last thing. Let's do this one. I'm gonna control A, control C, and I'm gonna put this one in front of the bucket as if it's falling. And I'm gonna get a red one for in front of Madison's dress. Control A, Control C. Actually make that a little bit smaller, Control T. And move it up just a little bit. Um, I'm going to put some motion blur on these. So I'm going to go to filter, blur, motion blur as if they're falling. So I'm going to make sure that it's kind of, actually this angle is pretty perfect. So I'm going to, um, bring this down just a little bit, but I'm going to make sure that my, see how my heart is falling this way. I want to make sure that my, um, the circle, the direction of the line in my circle is doing the same thing. And for this one, I'm going to do the same thing, blur, uh, filter, blur, motion blur. This one's falling a little bit more straight, so I'm going to move that. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. It might even be a little blurry, a little too blurry. Oops. There we go. Okay, um, for these two hearts in the front, I want to give them a little bit of blur. Um, whoops. This one. So I'm just going to go to blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm just going to blur it just a tiny bit. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing to not that one, this one. 
filter, gauge and blur, and I'm just going to go to my most recent. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit more on there. Blur, gauge and blur, and I'm going to go to, let's go to five. Yep. All right. Let's put a curves on that one. Oops, I forgot to do my clipping mask. Bring down my highlights. Take away that con that contrast. And put a little bit of red back in. Okay, and then I can blur those to the falling hearts. Okay, last two that I want to put. I want to put some big hearts in the front. So I'm going to do Control A, Control C, Control V. I'm going to transform it just a little bit, and I want that to go like right here. Click OK. And I'm going to do the same thing with the pink one on the right. And that one's good. Control A, Control C, Control V. And there's no rhyme or reason. I mean, you can really do, you know, whatever you want with this if you want to put more. Sorry, I thought we were going to be interrupted there for a second. All right, I'm gonna put some blur on this. This one's gonna need more gauge and blur because it is farther in front with the camera. Um, I'm probably gonna go right about, maybe a little bit more. Okay, 16, I'm gonna put the same one on this red one. Perfect, and then I'm gonna group them. And I'm gonna add my curve. Whoa, that's not what I wanted. And <laughs> add my, okay, curves. And hold that thought, I will be right back. Okay, let's see, I'm going to, oops, oh, my clipping mask. And then bring down that highlight and that contrast. I'm gonna make those just a little bit darker. Yeah, because they are on the front, so I don't want them to be quite as bright. Okay, so let me group that. Okay, and we are pretty good. That's about all I want to add as far as stock goes. So the only thing that I want to make sure that we do now is I want to, um, if it were me, I would go through and I would save these layers because if for some reason while I'm doing my editing, I would come back, I would want to make sure that I have the ability to um, you know, start fresh again if I needed to. I'm not going to worry about that now because I have my layers from when I originally did this image. So I'm going to right click and flatten. Um, whenever I go to my edits, I always flatten just as a personal preference because it just, it works better for me. Um, but that's entirely up to you. I did forget, I do want to add, I'm going to come back to that. Okay. So I'm going to control J and I'm going to go to filter liquify. So what I want to do is I want to fix the, uh, my girl's little bun here and make it a little more rounded, a little bit fuller. So I'm just gonna use the forward, forward warp tool and I'm just gonna go through and kind of um, make it a little more princessy. As my girl likes to be princessy. Oh, and while I'm here, I'm gonna fix that grass while I'm thinking about it. Okay. And I'm just doing this very slowly because you don't want to just do a complete, like, uh, like a complete revamp of her bun. Okay. I'm going to give her just a little bit of curl here. 
just have to be careful because I'm working around all of her. <laughs> well, these are all of her sweat curls, but I'm going to work around her, uh, her ear and her cheeks and her face. All I'm doing is just giving it a little bit of volume. All right. And then I'm going to move over to my little one and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to give her a little bit of an oomph. I'm just, um, I'm going with her hair. So that's another I also notice like if you're doing like if you're working with bigger sections of hair, the bigger the brush, the more natural it looks. But it's when you do like the smaller pieces, like down in here, use a smaller brush and it'll help it to um, look a little more natural. Like here I'm pulling too much, so I'm going to bring that back in, but I do want to pull her curl out just a little bit. Okay. All right, so let me turn that on and off for you so you can see the difference. It just gave them a little bit of volume. Not much. You know, it's pretty subtle. I'm going to flatten. I am going to add a little bit of a flower to Madison. So all I did in Pixel Squid was I just rotated this so that I could cut this little pink part of the flower out. I'm going to control C and control V. And I'm just going to give her a little flower. I think I did two of these in my original image, but um, I think one's okay too. But I want to do I want to do the curves on there because I want it to blend a little bit better, so it doesn't look like it's just um, you know stuck on her head. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring the curves layer up. I'm gonna bring the highlights way down, not that down, and I'm gonna bring the contrast. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Um, the other thing that I do want to do with that is I want to do a curves layer and I want to darken the bottom just a little bit. So I'm going to invert it. And with a soft round brush, I'm going to just kind of Sorry, brush it 100%. I'm going to darken that just a little bit, like where the flower meets her hair. Okay. Yeah, that's better. It doesn't quite look as stuck. Okay, I'm going to group that. Actually, I'm going to flatten it. Right click, flatten. Okay, so now we're on to the skin. So, what I normally like to do is I normally just go to solid color. And I pick a, usually like a soft, like peachy pink color. I change it to soft light. I invert it. And I kind of just go over their skin. I don't do a whole lot of this only because my girls are very fair skinned. So I just do a little bit and it's going to look ridiculous right now, but I like to do it at a hundred percent and then I go back in and fix it. <laughs> so that's just so I can see, so I can see what I'm doing. Um, but this doesn't have to be completely perfect because this is, um, it's going to be so light. It's just a little added way to give them just a little bit of brightness on their skin. Like you can see, I mean, my Avery, she's, she's so fair skinned. So it kind of, I don't do a whole lot. <laughs> it looks like I do right now, but, um, I brighten it or I, uh, lower the opacity quite a bit. There we go. And you can see the difference is just, um, oops, I've lowered it too much. It's just a really tiny way, like a really subtle way to kind of blend them all together so that their coloring is all the same. All right, I'm gonna right click and flatten. 
And I'm going to go through, Avery's feet are pretty purple to me, so I'm going to go through and um, let's do selective color. And I'm going to take out a little bit of cyan. And I'm going to invert it. And color her feet. There we go. That's a little better. Actually, I even want to put a little yellow in there. Not that much. That's better. You can see the difference there. It just kind of matched her feet with her face. All right, I do put a little color on their cheeks. And a lot of this part of what I do, um, I learned from Tara Lesher Photography. So if you have the opportunity to go um, get with her education group, that's where I learned a lot of these um, these little tactics and like little detail things that I love. Um, and again, I do it at 100% and then I go through and lower my opacity. And I, I do a lot of pinks on my girls just because, again, with their fair skin and, um, you know, with their coloring, they just, it looks better on them than darker colors. So, <laughs> that's a little silly, but once I lower it, that's a little better. Okay, we are just about done. Um, I'm going to do some dodge and burn. So again, um, curves layer, I'm going to brighten that and I'm going to invert it and I'm going to label it dodge and I'm going to do another curves layer and I'm going to bring that down, invert it and label it burn. So with a soft white brush, I'm going to go through and, um, all over the highlights. I'm going to add highlights on there. Hang on just one second. My little one needs me. I'll be right back. Okay. So let's see with my dodge with a soft white brush. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned this, but if this color, if this is like a random color right here, so like this one's gray, if I need it to go back to black and white, I can just hit D and it'll take me back to my, um, where I need to be. So um, okay, again, I do the 100% and I'm just going through and I'm kind of brightening up the areas where the sun's hitting, where it's a little bit lighter. And I don't have really like a specific uh, structure that I follow with Dodge and Burn. I know that there is one, but I'm, I just like to play with it <laughs> and whatever I like, uh, I usually go with and um, you know, is that technically correct? Probably not, but it's what works. I do try to focus on where, um, like where they have lighter areas. I try to focus on like, if it's lighter there, then I try to keep it lighter or I'll brighten it up with my dodge but um i'm pretty basic on what i do as far as like technicalities go and you know i'm sure as i continue to grow as a photographer i'll learn them you know i'll learn them uh the more proper techniques but for me just starting this is like this is where my heart was like this is where i totally wanted to uh produce work like this um i'm gonna darken that one it all starts with just playing with it, you know, and just figuring out what you like and what you don't like. And, um, you know, the technicalities will come the more you practice and I still don't know them all, but you know, I like to just play with it. And the more that I experiment and the more I play and the more I, um, try new things, the more I figure out the technical, um, way of doing things. I'm going to group that so you can see it when I turn it on and off. So you'll see, it just gives them a little bit more of a pop. Um, I did forget to do burn on Madison's dress. Let me do that real quick. So it's a little too bright right there. Um, so a lot of it just kind of came with practice. And even then, I'm still, I still have a lot to learn. So 
Let's go. I'm going to get a little bit in her face. It's hard to see her face because of the way she's um, sitting or bending down. So I am going to dodge and burn eyelashes a little bit just to give them a little bit of a pop. Same thing with the dodge. I'm going to Oops, I wondered why I couldn't see the... <laughs> wow, Elizabeth. Okay, whoops. Same thing with my Avery. Okay, so I still have my opacity at 100%. So you, I mean, you can see it looks pretty goofy. Um, but if I bring this down just a little bit, it's just enough to give them a little bit of a pop, um, you know, without looking too crazy. I'm going to actually darken this just a little bit. Her face is just a little too bright. Okay. All right, so we've done our dodge and burn. I do want to take out some of the green that's going on here. So one way to do that is I can go to Selective Color, and I'm going to take out the cyan because I want it to have a little bit more of a pink tone to it. And I'm going to bring in a little yellow. Okay, so there's my Selective Color. I'm also going to add a Photo Filter onto this. Um, I usually bring mine down to 25%. That's pretty much my favorite. And then I usually bring this down to about 50 to 60, depending. So it's a little too orangey for me, so I'm gonna bring back just a little bit of cyan. And we're good. Okay, so that just warmed up my image quite a bit. I'm gonna right click and flatten. I do want to put a little bit of a vignette on there, so I'm going to go to Curves Layer. I'm going to darken. And with a big, soft black brush, I'm going to go through, and I'm going to make my circle as big as it'll go. Not quite as big as it'll go, but I am going to remove it off of them. There you go. All right, next thing I want to do is I want to put a, let's put a gradient on there. I want to bring out the pink tone, so I'm going to change this to radial. I'm going to click reverse, and I'm going to click my colors. On the left is going to be your outside color, so I'm going to do like a, um, a really soft pink color. I'll try that. And then on the inside, which is on the right, I'm going to do like a, a soft peach color to bring out their skin tones. Okay, and I'm going to change this to soft light. All right, so that brings about a little bit more of the pinky tones to it. I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. And this image is actually still a little green for me, like the green is a little too much for me. So I'm going to go to Control J. Filter, Camera Raw Filter. I'm going to click on the saturations and I'm going to bring down the green. It doesn't make much of a difference, but there's a little subtle I can tell from my end. Okay, um, let's see, what else do I want to do? I want to, let's put, this is one of my favorite things to do is a gradient map. So if I click on the colors right here, on the left hand side I'm going to change this to a dark purple and on the right hand side I want to make sure it's black. Whoops. Whoa. Let me cancel that and start over. Okay. Um, okay. On the left hand side I want to do purple and on the right it's black so I'm going to click OK and I'm going to change this to 
exclusion. Okay, so all that does is it brings about, it lightens up the shadows in the back a little bit and makes it a little bit more um, soft and a little bit more of the painter feel to it. I am going to add another curves and I'm gonna do one more dodge and burn. Um, because I want to have them stand out just a little bit better. I'm not sure if you can hear them or not, but they're playing. So sorry if you're distracted by the little people. Okay, that's much better to me. All right, perfect. So I'm pretty happy with it. The one thing I would probably add, ah, oh, sorry, hold that thought, is I would do a solid color and I would put like an orangey, like a, let's try that, let's see what that does. And then I would do soft light, and I would invert it, and I would kind of go around where the sun is hitting and just brighten it up a little bit. I'm actually going to bring this down. There we go. One last thing I want to do, I do want to do another vignette on there. I'm going to do Control J, Filter camera raw filter and hit FX and I'm going to bring down the vignette. Click OK. And there you have it. That's it. I'm happy. Okay, so this is the, the tutorial for the Valentine's Day picture I did for uh, 2018. I hope you love it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This was one of a, a really fun image to make, especially <laughs> last minute creativity at its finest. So, all right. Um, with that, I'm out of here and my kids are starting to go a little stir crazy. So wish me luck. We're going to probably go, I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to do something. <laughs> so, all right. Thanks so much for watching and we'll talk to you soon.